Good morning. Good morning. Well, I guess I'd better get up and get the pot on. Call me when it's ready. Hartman? Hartman, you awake? Yeah, I'm awake. Well, today's the big day, Hartman. Mr. Robert B. Jameson walks out the front door free as the wind. <laughs> I do hope he enjoys it while it lasts. Good morning, Karen. How are you this morning? Oh, I'm fine, I guess. I'm a bundle of nerves, though. Thank you very much. I appreciate all you've done. Okay, Bob, you got another crack at it. You got your job back. And if I were you, I'd think real serious about going back to your wife. You've both had time to think about it. You get your home life in shape. Everything is going to be okay. If I can ever do anything for you, you let me know. Thank you, sir. I appreciate that. You bet. Hey, Hartman. You said your prayers yet this morning? No. But I am bowing down to the great god Hulk. Mm -hmm. So get off my back. A little touchy this morning, aren't you? Hey, uh, you remember to tell, uh, what's his name? Uh, old Miller at the machine shop that he better get you that pipe. Then you better, uh... Look, you get... I'll get that pipe for you. But I'm not going Hey, Hartman, to... keep your voice down, will you? I look stupid. You're in here for something you say you never did. But you're black, my friend. That's enough for them to keep you here until you rot. I ain't going with you. Well, you're going all right. Unless you know somebody else can fly me to Mexico. I'll get that pipe like I said... Yeah, I'll... you're right, you will. Unless you want to end up like Jackson. Another accident. Help us be dependent on you rather than ourselves. And let your love work through us now and throughout the day. We thank you for our family and for the food we are about to eat. In Christ's name, amen. Amen. Aren't you being a bit hypocritical praying this morning, Daddy? Why, Connie, what a thing to say. You know what he did last night, Mom? After Randy brought me home, we were sitting in the front seat of the car, talking. At 2.45 in the morning? Anyway, Mom, he calls Fred up in the tower and has him turn on that monstrous searchlight. They swing it around, over the wall, and right into the front window of Randy's car. Oh, Rick. I have never seen her come into this house so fast. <laughs> but what else was I supposed to do? Let Randy Hill kiss me and let the whole town watch? Pass the cereal, please. What did, uh, uh, what's his name? Miller. What did Miller say about the pipe? What did you expect him to say? No. Besides, he figures if you make it or get killed trying, it's worth it just to get you off his back. Good. Good to have friends you can count on when you need them.
gonna be a long day, Hartman. Hey, don't you mess this up for me. You guys working on the farm today? Yes, Mother. I don't know how you always manage to change job assignments, Hopper, but we'll miss you. Well, if we're not back in time for your sewing class, you start without us. What's that for? Some coffee cake for Buck. You know, I don't think Buck really appreciates all those gifts you send down to the office. Oh, of course he does. He needs to know people care for him. Ever since he lost Carrie, I feel sorry for him being alone. In fact, I think we should have him to supper again soon. Have a good day, dear. inside the walls, but out here we make the rules. Get off. What's going on out here? Hey, Hawker, give me that pipe. Mm. 
buck. It's a bag of goodies from Barry. Thanks. I appreciate that. Yes. Thank you. Right speaking. Oh, how long ago? Okay, we'll be right out. What? Are you serious? Oh, boy. All right, I'll, uh, I'll be right there. Uh, Buck, I'll handle this. You stay here and finish those accident reports for Paul. What's up? Um, a break. And you want me to stay here? Mm-hmm. Jim Hawker is out, isn't he? Uh-uh. No way am I staying here. Buck, I said stay here. I don't want you out there doing something we'll both regret. All units 1065, a code 10 0. Escapees from the prison farm. James Hawker, Caucasian, 6 1, age 29, medium build, wearing glasses, considered dangerous. William Hartman, black, 510, medium bill, age 26, base clear, KDN 492. Boy, Karen, you really are uptight. You're gonna have that eraser worn out by noon at the rate you're going. Kathy, I just don't know what to say to him. The way things were when he left could really be hard. Yes. I'm working on it right now. Yes, I know. I'll have it for you in a few minutes, okay? All right. Hey, didn't you tell him that Bob was coming home? No. I don't even know for sure if he even is coming. Look, why don't you go downstairs and have a cup of coffee and calm down? I'll type the letter for you, okay? Then come back upstairs and tell him what the problem is. He'll understand. Thanks. You're a doll. Get your job back. And if I were you, I'd think real serious about going back to your wife. You know, I told you that I never, ever wanted to see you again. But last winter, when I accepted Christ, something wonderful started happening. My bitterness toward you began to disappear. I forgave you, Bobby. And if you could find it in your heart to forgive me, I just know we could make our marriage work. I forgave you, Bobby. My bitterness toward you began to disappear. You get your home life in shape, everything's going to be OK. I just know we could make our marriage work. Well, why did you have to hit him so hard? Uh, will you just shut up? I mean, you just shut your mouth and you do like I say. First thing we gotta do is get the Salida. And we'll score to settle with Jameson. And we'll get Oh, the man. You already got me involved in one killing. Now you... Man, you're sick. My mama used to say that hate can eat out a man's ass. You just shut up. And if you didn't have that lousy pilot's license, I'd dump you in a minute. And then where would you be? I mean, you're so helpless you can't even stay out of jail. And you ain't even done nothing. I don't want to hear any more whining out of you. None. Kathy, Bobby didn't kill that woman. Jim Hawker has an incredible influence over people. He conned Bobby into that robbery. But Jim killed that woman, not Bob. Mm -hmm. Jim Hawker got life, and your Bobby got a suspended sentence. Got off scot free. Now he's in prison for a year for stealing tools from his boss. Jim Hawker cut him into that one? Well, that was partly my fault. 
Bobby and I were such dumb kids. We rushed into marriage. I didn't even know if I really loved him or if I just felt sorry for him. He couldn't handle the responsibility. Neither could I. Couldn't pay our bills. Then he started drinking. And everything just fell apart. Uh, my attitude was really awful. It just made it worse. I think the thing that really worried Bob, though, was Hawk. You see, Jim Hopper and I had been engaged to be married in August. Then Jim went to prison, and on August 20th, Bobby and I got married. Christ in your heart. You really did forgive that guy, didn't you? Yeah, I really did. It surprised me too, but it's true. I've been writing to him for about five months, telling him about Christ and what fantastic things he's done for me. But it wasn't until a couple of weeks ago that I could really tell him that I had forgiven him. And I do want him to come back. You really have changed. If your Jesus Christ could make you forgive all that, you really must be something. I only got two years. Two years. Maybe less if my lawyer can get enough evidence oh, to prove. Man. Ain't no lawyer gonna mess with you unless you got bread. I mean, that's what your lawyer's interested in. When are you gonna grow up, man? And no wonder you're in the can. That's where you're safe. Okay, okay. What if he doesn't get me off? Two years ain't so bad. Now I'm faced with five to 44 breaks, and no telling how much they'll hang on me for running around with you leaving a trail of blood everywhere. You plan to kill this guy, Jameson, and I ain't done nothing. You got nothing to lose, I do. What's the matter? Better get some wheels. You want to build this to the church? Yeah. Okay. See you later. Like I tell you, I'm gonna bust up your head a little. Do as he says, he means it. How about you, Station 3? Anything? Negative. Nothing yet, Chief. Oh, well, stay with it. Hello, Karen. No. No. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I didn't mean to bother you. <laughs> well, that's okay. You just startled me. I, I, I didn't expect you to come here. Maybe I shouldn't have come, but I really wanted to see you. you. You look, you look really good. You look pretty good yourself. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Um, Kathy, this is Bob. Bob, this is Kathy Hanson. Bob, Bob. Why don't you just take the rest of the afternoon off? I'll explain to the boss. <laughs> Thanks, Kathy.
good, Kitter. I'm gonna break your other one. Son? No, sir. I guess I just wasn't paying any attention. Mm -hmm. May I see your driver's license? I don't have one. Well, now, do you mean you don't have a driver's license or you don't have your driver's license with you? No, sir. I mean I don't have one. Back door is unlocked. Yes, sir. What's your name, son? John Warner. Well, John, how is it that you're driving this vehicle without a license? Well, I... The kids in the church youth group are getting ready for a youth night program next week. They're getting it ready for it. All right, I'm just going to give you a warning this time. I've got a lot more important things on my mind. But I want you to take this vehicle back to your church and leave it there. And don't do this again, all right? Yes, sir. Sir? Yes? Thanks. God's watching him, right? That right, kid? Ain't you religious? I'm a Christian, if that's what you mean. That's what I mean. Ain't Christians religious? A religious person isn't necessarily a Christian. What do you mean by that? I'm a Christian. I go to church every Sunday. I used to. Well, just going to church and believing in God doesn't make you a Christian. A Christian is one who asked Jesus Christ to come into his life and believes that Christ died so that his sins could be forgiven. Christianity isn't a religion, it's a relationship. Do you guys realize that, that Christ died so that your sins could be forgiven? I mean, you guys are running from God and you can't run that far. Hey, choir boy, you better find out something about sin before you start mouthing off about it. I remember my mama used to tell me that in the Bible it said our sins would be forgiven as far as the east is from the west. But I thought... Hey, look, Harden, will you shut up? I don't want to hear any of that garbage, man. I'm going to get rid of this kid right now. Come on, Hawk. What can he do to us now? He's pull the same stunt he just pulled. That's what. Hold it, Hawk. All units. A blue pound truck, Union Paul, 7853, on errand earlier for First Community Church has not arrived at its destination. Please be alert for this vehicle. Repeat, license number, Union Hall 7853. This is car four. Check on Highway 50 West. I just contacted that car about 10 minutes ago. Code three. Car three, 10 four. <laughs>
pull over to the sun. I'm not gonna let you hurt this kid. You'll have to stop me first. John, if he makes a false move, stop the truck and run! Too late for me. Get ready, old roadblocks to the gorge and Highway 50. Right, T. Car three suspects are now located in an area approximately five miles west of Wellsville. Are you all right? Yeah. Request they went over that hill. Were those men armed? I don't think so. Request assistance this location, Highway 50, and Junction, Texas Creek, Code Creek. Well, I'm going to have to stop at this chair. Is KRMC newsman on the scene, Ron Haichu. Two fugitives have been out since this morning after beating a guard identified as 46-year-old Burl Peterson of Canyon City. The two fugitives, William Hartman and James Hawker, made their escape from the prison farm on a tractor. It is not known if the men are armed. However, they should be considered extremely dangerous. Anyone knowing the whereabouts of these men are urged to call local authorities immediately. Ron Haichu. Well, I can almost guarantee you that unless he gets caught, and gets caught soon, that he'll try to find me. Maybe even you. It was no coincidence that he got out today. But it's been over five years. You don't think... When a man's in prison, Karen, he has a lot of time to think. I've seen hate grow like a cancer, and it scares me. When you and I got married, and when he found it out, he almost beat an inmate to death. I wonder what's going on there.
Well, Mr. Jameson, tonight you are going to have a pizza fit for a king. Giant mushrooms and mozzarella cheese, lots of green pepper. Karen. And lots and lots of pepperoni. So you'll know what it's like again to lie awake at night with heartburn. Karen. And I'm going to make you a tall salad with those little fruit times. What? You don't like my menu? Thank you. For what? For giving me another chance. When I really needed it the most. I should be thanking you for giving me another chance. I was afraid you'd think I was a religious nut. Not even consider coming home again when I started sending all those letters about how my life had changed. No. As a matter of fact, that's what really made me start thinking about it. When I went to prison, you were very bitter. You had a right to be. But now you're so very different. You're not the same girl. Whatever happened to make you forgive what I put you through? Well, I just want you to know. Is Dad's shotgun still in the closet? Yeah. I just got out. Well, somebody's trying to... How much do I owe you? Uh, I forgot. Man, those guys must have wings. They didn't get that much of a head start. Hawk knows these mountains like the back of his hand. Yeah. And that's kind of ironic in a way. The Sangre de Christos. I wonder if he knows what that name really means. The blood of Christ. Let's call the police and ask him to come here until Jim's caught, okay? Yeah, I think you're right. Johnson speaking. Say, Chief, what's the deal with Buck being grounded? He's a good man. Yeah, he is, Jim. But there's a there's a sad story behind that man. A few years ago, he and his young wife owned a grocery store. One day, he went out to make a bank deposit. While he was gone, a couple of young guys came in and held her up. She was shot, and a few days later, she died. Buck never quite got over that. Well, you know his reputation. Anybody breaks the law that much, he nabs them. All right, I'll send an officer out right away with that address. All right. Anyway, the guy that killed Buck's wife is Jim Hawker. Look, honey, right in here, Matthew 7, verse 14, it says, Your heavenly Father will forgive you if you forgive those who sin against you. But if you refuse to forgive them, he will not forgive you. You know, it's a hard thing to forgive someone. I wanted... I wanted to forgive you. But I couldn't. 
I just couldn't. It's not just something you can say. I mean, it really has to happen inside. You can't make it happen. I don't know how to explain it. When you left, I felt so awful. The guilt I had, the hate, it just weighed me down. I felt so ugly. Jesus Christ was crucified for us. His blood was shed to wash away our sins. And he did this simply because he loved us. It used to be just words for me. But when I said yes to Jesus, gradually, all the bitterness, the negative feelings, the weight just disappeared. I did forgive you, Bobby. It's real. I didn't just reach in and make that bitterness go away. When Jesus came into my heart, there just wasn't any room for anything else. Karen, I can see what happened to you is very real. But I just don't understand it. You never robbed anybody. You never got drunk. What did you ever do to, to hurt anyone? I know, it, it's easy for you. There's something in Romans. Um, it talks about that. Uh, Romans 3, 3.22. Look, it says... Now God says he will accept and acquit us, declare us not guilty, if we trust Jesus Christ to take away our sins. And we can all be saved in the same way by coming to Christ, no matter who we are or what we've been like. Hartman, you don't learn too good, do you? Come on, there's a mine over in the next valley. They got some trucks over there. Come on. Bobby, you can't clean up your life first. It's impossible. He wants you now, just as you are. If Bob Jameson were the only man on earth, he would have died just for you. Could any of us love someone that much? You can't turn away from that. He wants to give you peace and joy, and you hesitate. It's a gift, just take it. Now that's the part that doesn't make any sense to me. Nothing ever comes free. 
It just sounds too easy. I watch the catch. Look what at, do I have to do in return? Look at me, Bobby. Do I have chains around me? Price came to free us. You've already admitted that I'm a different girl. Yeah. That makes me want to believe it. I don't know. If everything you're telling me about the Bible is really fact, man, that's dynamite. <laughs> jerk. I mean, you've been praying you ought to have been running. Why are you going to quit being so stupid? You don't believe God exists, do you? Not until somebody proves him to me. I didn't see nothing happen when you were praying. Christian is one who accepts Christ. And I never did that. But I want to now. He said a Christian is one who believes Christ died for his sins. I believe that. But help me believe he did it for me. Father, please. I know I never was a Christian until now. But I want to be. I mean it. I really do mean it. going to get that plane now? No, Hartman, I told you, I got to settle up with Jameson first. Just a couple miles from Salida now. Hey, hurry up, get that truck out there started. I'm hungry. Can we get something to eat? Yeah, it's a good idea. Up the road, there's a grocery store. I got from the old man. But what if Christ won't accept me? He already has. He died a horrible death on the cross so that your sins and mine would be forgiven. So that we can not only live for an eternity in heaven, but have a happy, abundant life right here on earth. <laughs> what have you possibly got to lose by asking him into your life? Well, it's not that I don't want to. It just... it just doesn't feel right. Satan is working as hard as he can to make you doubt. Don't let him win anymore. He's already ruined half your life. Now give God a chance.
Lord. I don't really have the right, I guess, to talk to you. But Karen said you'd listen. I am thankful that she's given me a new chance at life. And she says you will too. Oh God, I don't know how you could ever forgive me for all I've done. But I don't want to mess up my life anymore. I admit, I'm a sinner. And if you really want me the way I am, then come into my life and do for me what you did for Karen. That's all you had to do. You know, I guess I really do feel different. I mean, I feel, I don't know, I just feel good. Now my problems are over. Oh, no, they're not. God never promised that our problems would be over. But he does promise to see us through them. You know what puzzles me? Chances are Hawker would go south to New Mexico on the border, down Route 69 past Horseshoe Mountain. Well, what in the world is he doing over by Texas Creek? He's been going west. Chief, how's it going? Well, good and bad. We've located those fellows in a specific area. We just can't seem to find them. I guess they're right under our noses. Well, Billy Hartman is innocent. The court just vacated his sins. Well, praise the Lord. Now if I can only find him. Man, he's gonna get in a whole lot of trouble out there with Hawker. So is someone else we know. Buck, he's out looking for Hulk and Hartman alone. By himself. You gotta be kidding. Thought he had more sense than that. Excuse me, Paul, but we've got to find those fellows before Buck does, or we are in trouble. If you don't mind taking a chance on things being put in the wrong place, I'll be glad to help you. Well, if you don't go back to getting empty milk cartons in the refrigerator, okay. Hey. You think you'd have time to make a rhubarb pie if I run back to the store real quick? Do you think you should before the police get here? Oh, that's not that far. I'll be back in a minute. Okay. I thought you went to the store. And then when I heard that noise. I'm sorry if I scared you. I was leaving. Then I remembered we used to have some of your mom's homemade rhubarb in the garage. <laughs> I just thought I'd check and I found some. I was scared half to death. <laughs> Man, it's about time. So surprised, Jameson. 
You didn't think I was going to leave town without saying goodbye, did you? Jim. Get back there. Come on. Roadblocks are now set on Highway 50 east of Salida and west of Canyon City by Royal Gorge Road. I think we better check it out anyway. Okay. You guys stay here. We're going to check this vehicle out.
like to remind you the police stay right up on those boardwalks and out of the streets during this entire show. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, the Louisiana Duel. It's showtime. Hold it right there. Thanks. And am I glad to see you. Glad to see you here, Buckskin Joe. And hey, this town ain't big enough for the both of us, right? So uh, we're going to split. out here. Round up as many men as you can and get up to the village. Right, Chief. Thank you. 
and we're on, you get that thing moving. Be straight with me or this chick's had it. Stay here and help hold down the confusion. I'm going to meet Hawk on the other side. up, Jameson. Take a walk. Now listen, Jack. Get the out! Why'd you do that? <coughs> it was... Back there when the dynamite was going. <coughs> I remembered something my mama said once. A promise God made. He said that he would... <coughs> he said that he would forgive our sins as far as the east is from the west. 
You realize how far that is? He forgave me, Jim. He can do it for you. No, not for me, Hartman. Too late for me. Billy. Billy. If getting mixed up with Hawker doesn't blow it for you, you're a free man. The court vacated your sentence a couple of hours ago. Oh, my God. to save me and me of all people I'm not worth it love Jim a very special kind of love that only Christ can give two beautiful people shed their blood and died to save you what are you gonna do with that Jim Billy Hartman took your bullet Christ died on the cross because he loved you. Can you understand that, Jim? Christ didn't do that for me. Maybe for people like Hartman. Not for me. No, it was for you. And for people just like you. Jesus Christ was being crucified on the cross, shedding his blood on the mountain between two criminals. And one looked over at him and said to Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Christ looked back and said, today you shall be with me in paradise. And Christ took him just as he was, just as he was. 